that. I really appreciate it. Here comes Faith, the last minute. Let's take a photo. Awkward. No, I'm only kidding. My name is Susan Kerbeck. I am from America. I'm from California. Selena's California. Everybody asks. So let me go ahead and let you know a few things. I'm going to speak for about a half an hour. I will not be taking the Q&A at the end because I have a lot of content to get through. Um, Melody's going to speak after me, and she's going to probably have time for Q&A and then food. But we're all going to be here. We're happy to answer all the questions you want. Sit and talk to me about anything you want to talk about. Um, afterwards, but just for time reasons, I'm just going to not use Q&A. Um, I do run this project, it's called About Time. Um, um, it's called About Time Project, it's a nonprofit, and all of the information pretty much I'm going to be telling you tonight is located on this website. So I'm happy for you to take photos, in fact it's great, please take photos of the slides, um, or myself, I don't care, but do friend me on Facebook and share the pictures if you want. But go ahead and look up the information I'm going to give you afterwards. I have a lot of content, and I'm not going to have time to go over everything, over everything in major detail. I have many different projects that I run, um, and but uh, I'm going to speak about one tonight, but I'm going to mention one more briefly. I am an expert on psychics, those who claim to be able to communicate with the dead. And I um, write about them, we perform scenes, we uh, expose them, we do a lot of different things concerning psychics. And I do have this YouTube channel called Psychics Explained, Grief Vampire Edition. So what we do is um, I take people's uh, readings that they've had done, their video or audio, and I analyze it in great depth. And we really look at why it is that it looks like they think, people think that they're communicating with dead people. And so it's much more involved in that. It's very complicated. And this is a very painful topic. People are being taken advantage of, mostly women. And it's people in the most vulnerable moments, reading people who are very vulnerable, that may have never fallen for this before, has nothing to do with intelligence, has everything to do with these people praying on them. And when I say pray, I mean pray as in P-R-E-Y, not P-R-A-Y. So if you want to look at my channel and learn more about what I do as far as the psychics go, this is my channel. If it's easier to remember, you can say psychic, S-E-X, claimed. Psychic, sex claimed. That's easier for you to remember. <laughs> Somebody pointed it out to me that they, they looked at the URL and they're like, wait, that's the psychic sex claimed. <laughs> okay, so it helps you remember, I don't care. But it's an interesting channel I started a community over there. But I won't be talking about that today. Um, Melanie and I are going to the, uh, the conference in Melbourne um, after this, a couple days. And that, that there I'm going to be giving a full talk on Wikipedia and a full talk on sites. Now I have lots of interests, lots of different things that are going on. But what I'm going to focus on tonight is the Wikipedia angle. And I run this project called the Gorilla Skeptics on Wikipedia, G-S-O-W. So I'm gonna give you kind of a crash course in some of the things we've been doing during the pandemic, mostly. We are a huge, powerful organization that treats um, Wikipedia with a lot of respect. We, I um, have created a training module. It takes about four months to get through training, and I have editors all over the world, many people in this, this community of sorts. Um, some people may know Julian and Harold uh, parents that are from Brisbane. I'll be talking about them in a minute. And we have editors all over. And we, people find that this is a way of doing activism without leaving your home, without confronting anybody, but being very powerful. So the Grill of Skeptics on Wikipedia uh, project is, um, as I say, it's international. We are located on Facebook. We have a secret football, and you can't get in unless you're a part of the group. Once you, you learn all the rules of Wikipedia, you learn how to Edit, it's all done by the rules, but I'm gonna show you some of the things we've been able to do. Because you're my peers in the skeptic community, this is my way of showing you what we've been doing. So um, one of the things we really have to do is before any time somebody does any kind of activism, and by activism I can mean writing an article, writing a book, writing um, or doing a, some kind of, you're trying to get the information out to the public in some way, whatever the topic is, you wanna start with looking at the Wikipedia page and find out if it's in great shape and if it needs to be changed to reflect good information, either you're gonna have to do it or you're gonna reach out to an organization like mine and hopefully we can get it in order. The reason why is because people are going to Google whatever the topic is. 
So like if you're going to do some sort of, I don't know, a protest or you're going to talk about something else in the media, once they heard you, whatever it is you're doing, they're going to go and Google it and they're going to find a Wikipedia page. And if it isn't, they need to be able to understand it more. So you have to start with Wikipedia first. And then once you've done Wikipedia and you make sure that's in good shape, you need to figure out how you're going to measure results. How, when am I done? How to do? And, and so on. So whatever you do, you have to have some way of measuring it. And then you always report back to your peers, report back to our community, which is what I'm doing to you today. It's my way of doing this. And it's, we do this because we want to make sure that we learn from each other and we learn from um, our successes as well as our failures. Because we're in, we're in this world right now that um, a lot of people would say is kind of a mess. And if we're waiting for the legislature, and if we're waiting for those politicians, and you're waiting for the whatever you're waiting for, for them, whoever them is, is going to fix this problem, you're going to be waiting and we're going to be in a bigger mess. It's, it, right now we have to take care of this. Okay, so I'm going to start off with big, one of the big dogs. And again, as I said, I'm condensing this a lot tonight so I can do it in a half an hour. So anybody know who this is? It's an American. He's in the news a lot. He's a Kennedy, yes, this is Robert Kennedy Jr. Currently, yeah, Currently, he's running for president of the United States of America, which is a huge insult to his family. The Kennedys actually themselves, all the other Kennedys have been writing about it, saying, please don't vote for my uncle. Nice guy, but don't vote for my uncle, you know. So, anybody here heard of Children's Health Defense? This is his organization that he uses, no? But it sounds great, right? Children, children cool. Health, good, good. Children, healthy kids. Defense, yes, protect your kids. But if you don't know any better, you would think it's a, you know, okay organization. But it's not. It's an anti-vaccine. Um, it's anti-GMOs, anti-fluoridation, anti-anti-anti-anti-anti-science anti organization. But you can't tell that from the name. So what we did, and this has all happened in the last few, uh, during the pandemic era, is we, re we wrote the Wikipedia page, and now, Thankfully, it's small. You guys can't read this because you're not supposed to be reading this right now. If you want to take a picture so you can go back and read the Wikipedia page, fine. But what I'm going to point out is that we wrote the Wikipedia page for the Children's Health Defense. And we did this for a lot of things that were anti-vaccine related. All the big dogs, all the famous 12 disinformation people that were getting out the most worst stuff when we were working on this. Um, one of our Wikipedia pages, you can tell it's kind of one of ours because you can see that we've got down here in the bottom um, corner here, we have a sidebar and it's got al our term, al term, eh, alternate medicine because we know people are only going to glance at the Wikipedia page and just like, oh, oh, this is anti-vax or whatever. The lead is very important the way it's written. It says it's an anti-vaccine organization. It's very clearly written written that way, and in yellow, I put some of the highlights in there that we purposely put in there in that place like we have. Now this is an RFK Jr., very powerful person. So you would think that he would be able to get a shut down, get a change, whatever. Well, it doesn't work that way. So uh, Robert Kennedy Jr., if you were to look at his website, this is gonna pop up on the website, the censorship is hiding us from you. And if you go in a little further, you will see this article, and it talks about how he's being censored, and how people are putting up misinformation about him and his organization on Wikipedia. And they've tried to get a change, and nobody will listen, and, and everybody's out to get, get him and everything like that. And it's one of my editors. It's one of my team that lives in Canada, of all places. And he wrote the page in English and in, and in French, because what did they show it was in great shape. So this, again, this is just the visual, you don't have to look at the numbers or anything and see the, the detail. We are able to, remember I said you have to measure things. You have to have a way of measuring. So what we do is we keep track of how many times the page has been clicked on. And that's all we can do. We can't tell if the page has been read. We can't tell if it's the same person clicking over and over. We just have that little measurement. That's all we can do when it comes Excuse to... Excuse me, is this sort of page you're looking at here? Yeah, this is how many times the Wikipedia page has been viewed. Right, thank you. Um, so you can see there's this giant spike here in the middle of, uh, of 2022, I think. So for whatever reason, it was, in the, it was in the media at that point. So we wrote the Wikipedia page in March of 2019, and since we've written this Wikipedia page, it's 
got over half a million views. So that's a lot of people you're educating about what this organization really is. And I'll, I'll, I'll explain something further in a minute, but so hold that thought that it's not just the people who are going to the Wikipedia page that are giving you information, it's further than that. So you have a woman here in your town, well not your town, but in your community. Oops. Her name is Barbara O'Neill. Anybody say, whoa, check out, I didn't do that. Okay, sorry. Barbara O'Neill, anybody heard of Barbara O'Neill? You've heard of Barbara O'Neill. Okay, so Barbara O'Neill really wouldn't have normally been on our radar because she is um, a nat naturopath and she is, um, she's believing a lot of weird things. And so I heard her on the Skeptic Zone. I don't know if you guys all listen to this, the Skeptic Zone podcast. I'm on her often. I love that place. I love that podcast. It's an Australian podcast. Um, and so they talked about her a lot. And so it takes, it's not easy to write a Wikipedia page for a person. They have to have a certain level of notability. And it's too complicated to get into with you right now, but it is, not anybody can have a Wikipedia page. It has only, has to reach, reach a certain threshold. So we saw that she just reached that threshold. And one of my editors said, I'll do it, I'm gonna write a Wikipedia page. And she was nobody, really, but fairly, fairly notable. So here's, remember I said earlier, you might uh, remember that thought, when you Google somebody, what happens is, and this is all I've Googled up here in the corner is Barbara O apostrophe N E I L. And what happens is she, she shares her name with a woman who is gone with the wind. So some of the pictures come up with Barbara O'Neill from Gone with the Wind. But you'll see that the number one hit when you Google her, and I made this slide a few days ago, is the Wikipedia page. So if you're Googling her, you're gonna see the first bit of Wikipedia. And you can't read over here really well, but, you, but the first line is, is an Australian alternative medicine personality known for promoting dangerous and unsupported alternative medicine. That's the first line in there. Yeah, somebody likes it. The power. <laughs> and, and that's not all. Over here in the knowledge bar, on the far side over here where the picture is, or, or the picture of Barbara and Milton Gun with the Wind, poor thing, um, there's also the first line of the Wikipedia page. It's right there. Boom. So people don't have to go to Wikipedia to get the information. People go, oh, oh, that's who she is. Forget it, I'm out of here. Uh, there, here's her website down here. So the Wikipedia page often comes up in Google search results either first or within the second or third of, of the entry. So it's super important that the Wikipedia page is first. Always start with the Wikipedia page first because that's where people are going to get their information, either by doing it this way or other ways. So. <clears throat> When we first wrote the Wikipedia page for Barbara O'Neill, she was getting no views. Maybe she was just locally known in Australia. As I said, she barely passed the threshold of notability. She was nobody really. So that you can see it's just a dead line. Up until 2023, if you look carefully, you'll see that it's starting to go up a little bit, the page views. We created this page uh, a while back, and then it was at 124,000 views up until a few months ago. And what happened is she found TikTok. Now, um, what happens is, I've been doing the skepticism game for a long time. And what we have found is that every generation has to have the stuff re-explained to them. The, the people who are coming of age now are like, oh, what, what do you mean? anti vaccine what? What are you talking about? Paul Word, Bigfoot, what are you talking about? I mean, this is the month. They are kind of getting their information in places like TikTok and other you know, YouTube channels and places that are click-headed. They want people to click on the link. So they come out with the most sensational videos, the most sensational headlines, all that information, trying to get people to click on the link. So TikTok is um, a hotbed of pseudoscience, absolutely. And there's a whole generation of people, probably 25 to 35, that are getting their information from there. And so we have to be on TikTok, but I can't be, I can't be everywhere. So I'm working on Wikipedia, which is gonna help. Now she's got, and you've heard it see up here, she's got half a million followers. Half a million is a lot. Um, she's got two million likes, and she comes up with these videos over and over, they're just nonsense. Um, I'm not gonna be able to show this to you because I don't have the audio right here, but um, on TikTok, there's, there's this doctor, and he's writing his death so he must be respectful. <laughs> Um, and he has been doing these videos 
uh, debunking hers. So he takes her video, and she saved her not it's about table saw being dangerous or whatever. She talks about everything. And um, he puts up the video, and then he, he cuts into it, and he says, oh my gosh, you know, sodium chloride is what I give everybody, you know, salt, or whatever they're coming into the ER or whatever. <laughs> he says, I can't, you can tell she's not a little doctor. You know, he's talking about her. And thankfully, thankfully, oh, yeah, you wouldn't be able to hear it really well. Um, thankfully, this man has um, two million followers. She has half a million. And he has 19 million likes, and she has two million likes. So you can see that this man at least has some more um, you know. So he creates all these videos um, talking about science and uh, health issues because he's not a little doctor. As I said, you know that he's wearing his stethoscope. And he has a guy who Dr. Tata. No, I'm sure he's probably legit, but I don't know. My point is, is that when you watch the video, and I'm not going to show you the video right now because I can't, it's the audio, but um, one of the things he does is he puts up the Wikipedia page. So when she's talking, she's doing her nonsense talking, and then he pops up the Wikipedia page, and he highlights it, as you can see, section, and he reads it out loud, and he's pointing with his finger like this. According to the Wikipedia page, and he reads all this stuff, my team member that I trained wrote. So this video, and it, and it goes through several screens. He's going, and then they say this, and this person is this, and this, and he's pointing to several parts of the Wikipedia page we wrote. So people don't need to go to Wikipedia necessarily to read the information we wrote. Somebody's just quoting it to them. And we see this happens often in the media. People will take, um, like a, we read a Wikipedia page, and you have a specific sentence in it, you know, and it's, you can tell it's words, and you Google that sentence. You'll see that our words appear in blogs, newspapers, all over. Because the media is so overrun, especially with science information. They've cut back, and they have to take shortcuts. So a lot of the media is getting their information from guesswork, Wikipedia. So I'm sorry to say so. It, I have no way of fixing that, except improving the budgets of the, of the newspapers and, and making them hold them accountable for science literacy. So the best thing we can do is make sure that we can be in wonderful shape so when they're copying and plagiarizing us and all those school children out there are plagiarizing us, at least they're getting good information. That's how we feel about it. And here's what the Wikipedia page used to look like for Barbara O'Neill's Wikipedia page when she went on TikTok. Look at that. Incredible. So you can see the stunt. And so she and 1.5 million views. So for somebody who's at 100,000, 100, uh, uh, 100,000 views, when she went on TikTok, people went and took off. So people are accessing her Wikipedia page to get information about her, and that's evidence. So we know how powerful Wikipedia is. It has to be done. And I'm just going to mention this real quickly. This is a, a post from my secret football on Facebook that you can't join if you want to be trained. And let me tell you, it's training. It's four months. It's not hard. But anyway, the person is posting, and she's talking about how one of the um, she got the idea of write, writing Barbara Neal's Wikipedia page because of somebody else in your community. Her name is Mandy McNoble. I think she's from Brisbane. Is she from? Mandy McNoble. So she's one of your Brisbane people. She's a, a nutritionist. And so she gave us the idea to, to talk to, uh, uh, to look into Barbara Neal. And so I'm just posting that because this is kind of showing how one of my editors who lives in Utah in the United States, or Idaho in the United States, happened to make Wikipedia page that hasn't, you can't do anything to it. Robert Kennedy Jr. would love to, and he doesn't have the power to, nobody's going to. So I, I'm trying to point out that you've got to really work together. And some of, I'm going to show you some Australian pages you've done. My biggest team of people outside of the United States is Australia, because I'm on the Skeptic Zone podcast and talk a lot, and this is my third time in Australia talking about this to people. And Australians just seem to be, they, they say, oh my gosh, you're trying to change Wikipedia, all Wikipedia? on science, scientific topics, paranormal, in all languages possible, Susan, that's insane, when do I start? So I mean, it's just this attitude, a can-do attitude that I, I experience with a lot of Australians. So my point is, so I'm gonna show you a few pages we've written, maybe you know the people, maybe you don't, but this is Dr. Carl, so we've written his Wikipedia page. Um, 
another one. Let's see what else. I just grabbed a few. We've got, we've got a, like five million views. Tracy Spicer, I don't know who she is. She's a television host. Um, does a lot of science content. Uh, journalist, social justice advocate, known for association, blah, blah, blah. Um, here is water fluoridation in Australia. One of my team members, I think Harold um, Barrett's from your group, the Brisbane Skeptics Club. They're moved now, but they were in the Skeptics Group here. Um, I think he wrote this. He was very interested in fluoridation. Um, so he wrote that. Uh, this one is Maynard. If you guys have seen the Skeptic Zone, he's a very famous um, podcast interview interviewer. He's just really a kick of the pants. One of the best interviewers I've ever seen that could interview anybody. Uh, the Tasmanian Zoo, I was given a talk in um, uh, Launceston a few years ago, and then I went down there and they took me to the zoo and I fell in love with the zoo. And during the pandemic, I rewrote the Wikipedia page because it was crap. It was, it was a really heartwarming place because the owner of the place had just died. So I, we do anything that has to do with science, science, paranormal, whatever people want to do. This is another Wikipedia page we wrote. It's a, it's a uh, Christian academy drug rehabilitation that's got a lot of problems. It, it is in um, Swan Valley, I don't know, in Perth. Okay, so that's, this is a Wikipedia page. We do get some people trying to vandalize this and, and change it, and we have, they can't, they can't get anywhere with it. You just can't. Here it is. <coughs> Astronomical Society of New South Wales. So we, somebody just picked up something small and did that. This is another one that the Barons did. So this is a married couple. They edit together, they travel around a lot, they love birds. So they've taken their love of bird watching and they, they go and they photograph the birds and then they upload the photos and then they go and improve the Wikipedia pages. And they wrote this Wikipedia page for the Australian Bird Guide, which is really sweet. Because it's, it's taking your passion all the way around. You know, it's not just birds, but now I'm able to educate people about the birds that we write about. It's really sweet. And then, I think you guys might have heard of the Great Crested Reed, which is a Pawtucket Tucky. That's the bird that uh, John Oliver wanted to win in New Zealand, the New Zealand bird. You guys all know what I'm talking about? Nobody's a Pawtucket Tucky. It was all over the news just a few weeks ago. He, he uh, infiltrated the he, he tried to, he put up billboards all over the world trying to get people to go and vote for this bird in, in New Zealand. And he dressed up the bird. It's hilarious. You gotta check it out. But anyway, so this is just some obscure bird that we've never heard of before. We did not edit this page, but he had a lot of publicity about it. And you can see the spikes in the Wikipedia page during the week that he was really trying to get people to go and vote for this bird. It did win. And the, um, the New Zealand organization that runs this uh, bird voting on contest made thousands and thousands of dollars in donations that we never have received. It was really fun. But you can see, we got 42,000, almost 43,000 page views in that like week, week and a half because people are going to Wikipedia to get their information. That's just the way it is. Here's, here's John Oliver, and he's, um, I'm not going to show the video, but that's John Oliver, and he's talking about how awesome this bird is. Everybody go vote for it. He gave everybody the link. And it's fun. But in case, John Oliver tries it with some of the other birds, maybe of Australia, that probably are also in New Zealand. We've got several Wikipedia pages waiting for him, and one of them is a canary white eye, which is a page that Julian Harold wrote. We have also the starfish, and we've also got white quilled rock pigeon. So these are Wikipedia pages that they've totally written just because they love birds and they love science, and then some people will read it and then get their information from it. And we always have to have the Wikipedia pages ready to go because we never know who's going to be the next star. We don't know where the next um, sensational moment's going to come from. This man right here is Stan Romanek. Nobody has heard of him. We barely heard of him. He's one of those people who um, was barely notable, barely notable. And a long time ago, one of my editors wrote his Wikipedia page because he's, he's in Colorado and he's trying to get like a uh, landing strip built for the UFOs to land. And it's got a lot of problems in the media to finish problem after problem, which makes all the more citations so that we can write a Wikipedia page. We wrote it and forgot about this page. And then all of a sudden, Netflix did a documentary on it. Out of the blue. I have no idea, no clue whatsoever. It's called Extraordinary Stan Romanek Story Abducted, Isolated, Misunderstood. 
And this is what happened to the Wikipedia stats whenever he, whenever he, um, whatever the, whenever it's there, one and a point four million pages on some obscure Wikipedia page that we lost track of, we care less. I mean, this is like four, four views a day, and then all of a sudden, boom, 40,000 views in one day. So we never know when the next viral moment's gonna happen with our, with our, our uh, Wikipedia pages. So what I'm trying to get my team to do is just work on what you're passionate about, we'll train and help you, and show you how to do it correctly so you're not converted, so that you can continue on with your edits and make it powerful. So most of the pages we've written, nothing's ever happened to. And that's the way I like it. So we really have very little pushback. So I'm gonna show you just, I'm almost done. I'm gonna show you one thing really quick. Remember I said we have to measure our results and not just the individual results. We have to measure, I have to have a way of measuring large results. So this is where we are right now. And this number right here changes daily. And we have written or rewritten stubs, like the really bad stubs page, 2,183. And before I left today, we added one more. And those 2,183 pages have already had 153 million, 433,638 page views. So somebody's watching our work and something's happening. And that doesn't count people like that doctor on TikTok who's just pointing and his followers are, he's got like, what did I say? Um, two, million. two million viewers. And some of those videos get hundreds of thousands if not a million views themselves. So that one video of Barbara Mill might have had a million views. And all he's getting is information from his Wikipedia. And then he's just spouting it off to his audience. And there's people doing that all over the place. And they're just taking our work further. And the media is doing it as well. They're getting their information from here all the time. So you can see it's powerful. This is all we know. And this is only the 2,000 pages we've done. We make edits all the time with little small edits. And they have, and we don't count them in that 2,000 number because we're just making small edits, small changes. I have people who do that all the time. And so I just want to remind you guys, before you do anything, always check Wikipedia first. It doesn't do any good whatsoever if we're not. If, if you do some sort of action in the world and you don't, take care of the Wikipedia page, then your activism is not gonna have the impact it would have if you had educated beyond just the action you do. You have to make sure the Wikipedia page, in the languages possible, that, that are gonna access it. We write 45% of the work we do is in languages outside of English. Okay, and I'm just gonna share one more, uh, one more time my website for my Greek Empire uh, channel. You can go to this and you can get me talking to the camera and explaining in great detail and listening to psychic readings and explaining what is going on. And they are smooth. These people, they, oh my gosh, it's just really bad. So here's one more time. It's just my website. You can go to our uh, abouttimeproject.org and you can go and you can read a lot about all the other projects I'm involved in uh, and my team, not only about the Wikipedia project, but also the psychics and we've been involved in facilitated communication, which came out of Australia, thank you very much. Not, you're not making you guys, but it's pretty, pretty sad. But anyway, all of the other projects that we do. Um, this is my, um, I have to get this completely updated with all the slides in here. But this is where you can find a lot of the information. If you want to join my Wikipedia editing team, you have to friend me on Facebook, send me a Facebook messenger telling me that you want to join. Um, you have to get open up a Wikipedia account, and then you just have to tell me, you know, I saw you in Brisbane, and you know, that seems really interesting. And then what I'll do is I'll give you a pre-training that takes two hours. You do the pre-training. At the end of it, you can make your decision if this is something you want to pursue, or if you're like, this is not for me. And you do your training, and then if you say, I love this, I want to do this, then I give you the full training, and that takes four hours, four months-ish, some people are quicker, some people are longer, and then you're put into a secret cabal on Facebook, hidden away, where we discuss everything, so you have to be on Facebook to be able to do it. But that's my time, so thank you very much for your attention.